Hello, I'm Anthony. Today I want to show you a technique I use with beat agent kits in Groove Agent. Groove Agent is divided primarily into beat agent and acoustic agent kits. Acoustic agent are the live drum set um, sounds. The beat agent kits are typically more electronic in orientation. Here I have loaded um, a preset from the Neuro Mindset expansion and everything I'm going to use today is going to be in that expansion. The preset itself is called Electech and it sounds like this. There's melodic content, there's vocals, there's all sorts of stuff that I don't generally want in a rhythm. I actually want the rhythm just to be the rhythm. What I'm going to do today is to use a couple of presets from this um, Neuro Mindset expansion to show you how I might go about laying a beat down on top of a simple bass line. So I've recorded this bass line. I'm going to use a couple of eight bar sections from it today to demonstrate. And the bass line on its own is very, very simple. So this first eight bar section is pretty much as simple as that. So what I want to do is layer this drum beat over the top of it. Now there's a couple of problems straight out of the gate with using this kit. The first is that we've got all of that melodic content that I don't want. But the second problem that I've got is that beat agent kits don't implicitly tie themselves to the beat of the underlying song. The way that you need to do it with beat agent kits is to open the pad settings. So as you can see, I have the pattern group selected. I open pad settings, which is the little um, settings cog. And down at the bottom of the interface, there's this really little, completely innocuous little button called sync to beat. I'm going to need to turn that on because I'm going to use follow transport to tie this rhythm in to my underlying song. Now, this function sync to beat is on a per pad basis. So if I have groove two selected and I click sync to beat, if I switch over to a different pad, then the sync disappears again. What you need to do is right click, select all pads. Now, every pad in every group has been selected. You can see that some of the functions are red. That means they're on for some pads, off for others. Well, in this case, I want to sync every single pad. So I'm gonna turn it on. And I'm also gonna make all of the pads exclusive. It doesn't particularly matter for this example, but I always do. So I'm just mentioning it now. See how exclusive is currently red? Well, I'm gonna to toggle it off so that I can turn it back on. Now, every single pad is synced and exclusive, which means they'll only play one at a time. Any groove that I play from this point onwards is going to be tied to the underlying song. Okay, so let's listen to this groove along with the bass line and you'll hear that melodic content clashing. There's bass content in the rhythm that's competing with my bass line. That vocal sound actually is completely fine. I just don't happen to want it in my song. Thanks very much. I'll take care of the melody if you don't mind. So I want to get rid of that stuff. See the pattern tab? Let's click that. So this is the pattern for groove number two. If we jump over to the instrument tab for a moment, you can audition each of these sounds and find the ones with melodic content. Now it's a little bit tedious to go through every pad, so I'll just cherry pick some of them. There's a sound loop with clearly melodic content in. The toms are tuned. I don't want that much tuning content in the drum, so I'm actually gonna take this out. Every piece of kit is subjective. I'm not gonna to get too hung up on that. Here are the vocals. I'm gonna take them out. So I'm basically gonna run through this entire group, taking away anything that has any melodic content. All of this simple drum stuff down at the bottom is totally fine. And from this point onwards, I'm going to start throwing away sounds back in a second. Okay, so you can see the pads on this particular preset that I've muted, and there's a couple in the second in the next group up as well. These are vocal lines, don't want them. So now if I play this groove back over on the pattern pads, groove two is going to sound completely different. Half of the melodic content, half of the groove content has just been thrown away. Now I've got a really simple drum beat to play with. At this point, I would typically audition all of these various pads. Again, it's not particularly interesting for you to watch me audition each one of these 16 pads, but you're basically listening for the stuff that's gonna go along uh, with this bass line. The easiest way to do that is to have follow transport engaged. That means when I press play in Cubase, these rhythms are gonna basically sync up and play along. So let's choose groove six, for instance. Go back to the beginning of the song. I'll press play and you'll hear the rhythm play along with the bass line. So 
it's basically just a case of choosing which rhythm you want. I've actually picked Groove 2 for this particular example today. So having gone through that audition process, muting the pads that I didn't want to hear, I'm now going to lock that in. I've chosen Groove 2. So at this point, I'm actually going to delete the drum sounds from the pattern itself. The reason for that will become apparent very soon. It's really simple. Just right click. So I'm on E1 here, which is one of the pads I want to get rid of. Delete all notes on E1. And I've got F1. And all I'm going to do now is go along each one of these pads that have been muted, throwing them all away back in a second. And that's that done. Went all the way up to uh, D2, which is the Vox loop, the highest Vox loop, throwing everything away that I don't want. I've now got this nice clean rhythm that can be dragged into Cubase. At this point, I basically want to abandon the Groove Agent Editor. Any edits that you want to make, that's all straightforward stuff. Over to the Agent tab, pick up this little button called Drag MIDI Pattern to Host Sequencer. And we do that. Don't need, oh, I was just about to say, don't need Groove Agent anymore. Turn off Follow Transport. The number of times that gets me, you end up with doubling the rhythm and it sounds weird for a while until you realize what's going on. Now I'm simply going to uh, duplicate that MIDI part and glue them together. So I have this eight bar drum line that looks like this. Let's give it a drum map, back up to Groove Agent, over on our drum maps drop down, create drum map from in instrument and then come away and back again. And there's my drum sounds. We have our visibility agent in the lower viewer. So you can either view all of the notes for the entire instrument or just call it down to the ones that have events. And there's our groove. This is going to sound exactly the same as it did when we had follow transport engaged in groove agent. Now then that sounds absolutely fine, but there's one extra step that I often like to try. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it does and it's always worth trying. I'm going to create a quantized groove from this pattern. So all I do is open my quantized panel, pick up the MIDI part that has the drum rhythm on it. And this is one of the reasons for deleting all of those notes out of Groove Agent before we dragged it into Cubase. This is the information that I'm interested in hearing. If I'd left all of those notes in the pattern, even though they were muted in Groove Agent, they would have formed part of the MIDI pattern. I don't want to quantize Groove with sounds that I'm not hearing. So let's drag this MIDI part onto my quantize panel. Just says drop audio event or MIDI part. And that's now created this eight bar quantized groove that I can use, I can apply this to my baseline. Like I say, this doesn't always work, but it's certainly worth trying just to see if you can lock the baseline in with the drum part a little bit. All we need to do is select the eight bars in question. This is a part of a much larger event. So I only want to quantize the stuff that I'm working on right now. Simply press Q. And if we zoom in far enough, you can see that the notes have been quantized slightly off the beat. Let's find one. There we go, 25.3. Let's have a listen to that. It does sound tighter in this particular case. It's worked. I might need to go in and do some manual editing, some of these hit points. I might not agree with Cubase's interpretation of where they are, but there's no harm in giving the program a chance to improve your music. If it doesn't work, you can always undo it. At this point, obviously, I, I now have an opportunity to lock in that preset. And if we go in, there it is down at the bottom. With it currently selected, you can rename it to something a little bit more elegant if you want, but I'm generally perfectly happy with the default naming that Cubase assigns. And that's example number one done. What I'm going to do now is jump to a new part of the song and create myself a new eight bar loop. At this point, the bass line has become a little bit more active. Let's just mute the groove agent for a moment. So I'm going to want to choose a new rhythm that goes over this bass line. This groove came to me while I was watching John Carpenter's Thing, classic film if you've never seen it. Awesome soundtrack. Okay, what I'm going to do now is reopen Groove Agent, and this time I'm going to choose a new pattern group. So all of the patterns from this particular preset are on group number two. I'm going to jump over to group number three, which is currently completely empty. I'm going to right click on the beat agent and say load pattern group. So this is going to leave the underlying drum sounds alone. All of those drum sounds that I muted will stay muted. 
the kit is going to stay exactly the same as it was. I'm just now loading a load of new grooves over the top. And each of the expansions has its own pattern group folder. So if I go down to the Neuro Mindset folder, I'm going to get grooves that are thematically linked with the one that I've used. And as you can see, here's the pattern group for Electech, which is the preset we currently have. Now again, this audition process isn't particularly interesting to watch. So I went through myself and chose a groove that I quite liked, this Epic One Grooves. All I have to do is single click and then I can close the browser down. And that's just loaded all 16 patterns from that, uh, from that preset bank into group number three. Now here's the rub. When you load pattern groups into, into Groove Agent, it overrides the sync to beat function. So I'm gonna be choosing groove number one, pad number one from this new group. But if I click it, see the sync to beat disappeared. So you need to basically remind Groove Agent that that's what you want it to do. I really wish you could lock this function. Steinberg, if you're listening, please give me the option to link to lock this um, function permanently. But I'm going to have to select all pads, sync to beat, off and on, and the same with exclusive as I always do. So now if I engage follow transport, Groove 1 will play along with this new baseline. So it's using the pattern group from the Epic preset, but the drum samples from the original Electech preset. And it just gives you this massive palette of potentially interesting grooves that when layered in an interesting and new way, I've thrown half the sounds away. I've chosen a new pattern group. I'm coming at this stuff from so many different angles that it no longer sounds like the preset. This is now sounding like my own music. And it just saves me the tedium of having to type in, you know, every beat by hand. I'm not particularly interested in doing that. I'm not a drummer. I want to use somebody else's creativity and then I'll basically just tweak it to my own designs. Okay, so let's say we've chosen this groove. I'll disengage, follow transport, jump over to my pattern. And once again, I'm going to run through this groove, deleting all of the drum sounds I don't want. Be back in a second. Okay, that's that done. Rhythm's nice and clean. Over to my agent tab, pick up the MIDI part drag it into Cubase, and we're done with Groove Agent. Double check, follow transports off, all is well. Let's duplicate this groove, glue them together, and that's the rhythm we were listening to a short while ago. A bit more animated. Let's create a groove quantize for this one. You can create any number of groove quantizers. That's why we saved the Electech. That's gonna be left where it was. Various different parts in the song, we're using slightly different grooves. So now I'm gonna drag the Epic groove down into the quantize panel, and then I can save that if I want. Let's see if this one works. Jump up to my baseline, zoom out so that I can see all eight bars. I'm just going to select with my range tool and press Q. Did that work? So far. Awesome. Now this is actually a piece of music I'm working on at the moment, so I'm not gonna save this project once I've finished, but just for the purposes of demonstration, let's remove the intervening bass line to see if those two rhythms work well together. Those extra little offbeat kicks are nice. It's the subtle stuff that I really like. I don't like to, you know, ram music down people's throats. But we're doing well, that's good. Let's choose this four bar section for my final demonstration today. I'm just gonna say, I've decided randomly that I don't like the snare sound in this preset. So I'm gonna jump over to my instrument tab and on D1, this snare is gonna get thrown away. I'm gonna turn it into a more subtle side stick that sits a little bit lower in the mix. I don't want that driving snare. I'm gonna use the browser to accomplish this. Now, a word of warning, there is a known bug in Groove Agent. Occasionally, you'll lose the ability to um, pre-listen in place. See, as I click each one of these drum sounds, I can hear them all as I'm going down, so it makes it really, really fast to audition sounds as I'm going. 
sometimes you lose this ability. Now I've done a long video talking about how to fix a broken browser in Groove Agent. The issue is still there. I had to fix it today. And the only way to do it is to find a project somewhere on your system that has a beat agent kit that works. And then you duplicate that track, close Cubase down. And when you reopen Cubase, everything will work again. However, people emailing me saying they can't find a project that does work. I've actually bundled up a project um, which I'll make available to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to check out the, um, the subscription links below, I'll share this default project with my channel members so that you can uh, gain access to it if you need it. What I'm going to do is switch to subcategory so that I can audition all of my various snare drums. I've chosen this neuro glitch side stick. So by simply having single clicked this groove, as long as I've got pre-listen in place engaged, it's basically gonna play that pad without having actually stored it there. Let's have a listen to it. And then if I'm happy with that, I can double click, overwrite that pad, and that sound is now baked in and will be used for all of the grooves. Here's the previous groove with the side stick. And that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit like. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.